Hi, my name is Megan and I'm an engineer at National Instruments. Today I'm going to show you how you can teach your students to design a controller to control the speed of the DC motor. Motor control is a very important topic in engineering. It's used in everything from printers, scanners, and cameras to robots and vehicles. There's a lot of theory involved in designing a controller, so it can sometimes be difficult to teach students. By combining an intuitive graphical software development environment with an actual DC motor, we can bring some of these concepts to life. My lab setup today includes an NI Elvis data acquisition and instrumentation device and a Kwanzaa DC motor plug-in board, which we'll use as our control plant. So in the first part of this demonstration, I'm going to simulate the response of the DC motor in software, design a controller, verify that it works, and then we'll use that same controller with the actual hardware. So if we take a look at the LabVIEW program, we're going to start with our transfer function. This is a mathematical description of how the inputs and outputs of the DC motor are related. It was derived from mechanical and electrical characteristics of the DC motor system. We're then going to feed this transfer function into our closed loop controller, which we've designed using the control design and simulation module. To build this controller, I started by adding a desired speed control, or set point, so we can control the desired speed of the motor from our front panel. Next, I have a summation block to compare the desired speed to the estimated speed. Then I have our PI controller. So first, we're applying a proportional gain to the air and multiplying it by a constant of Kp. And next, we're going to apply an integral gain to the air, multiplying it by a constant of Ki. So if we go to the front panel, we can go ahead and run our program. The graph here shows a white line indicating the set point or desired speed. The red line shows the estimated motor speed. So as we adjust it, we can see that our controller is currently not responsive, and that's because both of our gains are set to zero. So if I go ahead and increase the proportional gain, we can see how it affects the motor velocity. We want to increase this, but not too high, because our system could come unstable. We don't want it to be too low, otherwise the control action might be too small to account for system disturbances. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 1. One thing you'll notice with a pure proportional controller is that you're going to have some steady state error. And that can be represented by the gap, the constant gap that you see between the red line and the white line on the graph. So we can reduce the steady state error by applying an integral gain. So if I go ahead and increase our Ki constant, you can see we're going to get much better performance. So we want to increase this, but not too high, otherwise it will add overshoot to our system. So now, if I modify the desired speed, we can see that we have a much better system response. So now that we verified that our controller is working in simulation using the mathematical model of the DC motor, we can go ahead and test out the controller with actual hardware. So in the previous program, the black diagram has a transfer function, which is being used to represent the DC motor inside the closed loop controller. In order to bring in hardware, all we have to do is modify that block diagram and replace the transfer function with two data acquisition assistants, which are going to connect to the hardware. The first one is going to input a voltage to the motor drive. And the second one is going to take a reading from the onboard tachometer, which is going to give us the motor velocity as an analog signal. So if we go ahead and run this program, again, we're using the same controller that we did last time. We can go ahead and adjust our desired velocity. And you can see that we're off to a pretty good start for controlling our DC motor. Now, if we wanted to, we could add a derivative gain, which would help us reduce the overshoot caused by the integral term. However, for simple motors, or for simple systems such as this DC motor, a PI controller is really all we need. So hopefully you've learned how to teach your students how to design a controller to control the speed of a DC motor using LAVI graphical software and the Kwanzaa DC motor plug-in board for Elvis.